everybody, how's it going? Corey here from ThemeCo with a quick video running through how to create your first archive layout in our layout builder. So I've got this asset pulled up that I've been working on for a while here, and this is actually gonna be available in Design Cloud upon release. And you can see that we've got a lot of fun things going on in this particular design. We've got some scrolling effects with featured images coming in as we work down the page. We've got some conditional logic where posts without a featured image have slightly different output than those that do have a featured image. There's a lot of cool stuff going on, but really at its core, what the layout builder allows us to do is create the templates used for certain bits of repeated content throughout our site. And for the archive layout builder in particular, it allows us to create these archival templates throughout our site. So what is an archive in the WordPress sense, if you don't know that word already? You can think of archives as things like your blog index, or maybe a category or tag archive where you're showing posts from that particular taxonomy. It could also be something like a WooCommerce shop, but the way I really like to think about it is anytime you are looping through content, you're outputting these lists of content for people to get to singular assets, like a single post or a page. So with all that framework out of the way, let's talk about getting into the layout builder and starting to create our own archive layout. There's a few different ways you can get into the layout builder. We can select the pro menu in the WordPress admin bar and find layouts. Or of course we can find layouts in the backend admin navigation. But the way I'm gonna start right now is actually from this asset that I've already created. So this is my fully complete asset that I've been working on that we saw on the front end there. And my whole structure is set up. I've got everything outputting the way I want. And I've also got this layout assigned. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. We're gonna touch on that in a little bit later, but uh, keep assignments in the back of your mind because they're a really important step in making sure that your layouts are being output in the proper place you want them on the front end. All right, so let's create our own blog layout that we're gonna overwrite this current layout that we're already using with. To do that, I'm gonna go up to the navigation, open it up and select the layout builder. You can see that we've got our list of currently created layouts, but we wanna make a new one. So we're gonna click this plus button here. We're gonna give it a title. And then we wanna make sure we select the appropriate type. There's four different types in this list. Single, which would be for singular pages or posts. Archives, which again would be for like a blog index, taxonomy archives, or even um, a custom post type archive. And then we've also got WooCommerce Single and WooCommerce Archive. We will touch on those in some other videos, but the main thing with selecting those is we have a few different starter templates for y'all to use. So just make sure you've selected the appropriate type when making your first layout. So we're gonna click Archive here and then select Create Layout. Now what that's gonna do is create that new asset for us and take us right into it so we can get started. And the Layout Builder is really no different than the Content Builder. We are laying out the structure of our page and how we want things to work. The real primary difference is that we're creating something that we can assign to multiple contexts. And typically we're gonna output some data from a WordPress query coming through on that layout. So to get up and running really quick, I'm actually gonna start with one of our starter templates. When you click the use layout column there in the middle, you'll see these six templates come up in the modal and there's basically three different layouts with a light and dark variant for each. The really cool thing about all these templates is they've got everything set up for you. They've got the uh, post element output, which is just basically any sort of structural element with the appropriate loopers turned on. Again, there'll be more videos on loopers uh, for this release cycle later. They've also got the general design and structure, just a very basic form for you all to start playing around with. And then they've got the elements output. So, you know, headline elements with the appropriate dynamic content tags or featured images pulling through. So these are really just a phenomenal starting point and we definitely recommend you start out here and pick a few favorites and kind of start picking the design apart and seeing how things are working. So to get started, I'm gonna select this minimal light template. And when I click it, you'll see everything come into the page and we have a blog. So. Remember, we have selected our archive type in the layout builder. And what that effectively does in the preview back here is it kind of 
assumes that you are on the blog page working. Um, if you do want to assign an appropriate context or if something isn't showing up appropriately, you can go to the context switcher here in the preview manager and then select blog page because that's probably what you're going to start on first, but you can of course select various taxonomies, um, different indexes to work with, and that's going to make sure that the appropriate data is pulling through for you to play around with. And you can see we've got a very basic layout here. We've got our intro title, and then down here we have a post element, which the thing to keep in mind with working with content in this release is that a lot of these elements are really built out of pieces you already know and use all the time. So for example, this post element is really just a row that we've renamed to posts. This first post is just a column we've renamed to post. And on this particular column, we are using a looper consumer to consume the data being provided by the WordPress query on this page and output that information. Again, there's gonna be a lot more detailed videos on that later, but all you need to know right now is that since we're already on our archive page, simply turning this on is going to bring in those posts for us to work with. You'll see as I scroll down the page that we've got 10 elements here. Now 10 posts is the number I've got set in the back end of my WordPress installation. So if we wanted a different count for our index, we could adjust this maybe to nine. So these would be even on our desktop here. Or if you want to, just for this one instance, you could come down to this count and select many and then output a number that you want to use, maybe six instead so that it's even. But we do recommend using all and setting your number in the back end because that's going to determine how much data overall is fetched by the query that you're working with. Now, one thing you might note from looking at this page is that we've got this first post here and we can see some interactions happening when we move over it. But all of these uh, subsequent posts are kind of grayed out and faded a little bit. And that is because when we are using a looper, the first element in that loop is really used as a model for the rest of the post to follow. And it's a great way for us to create structured content that keeps a uniform feel throughout. So for example, if I clicked on this title and I didn't want this font size of 1.25 M's, I wanted it to be two M's. I can update that value and you'll see that every post in the rest of that loop is outputting that value that we just changed. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to our initial value. And you'll see also that when we hover over certain elements in this loop, we're getting this yellow observer with the dynamic content icon next to the label. That's gonna show up anytime you've got something that is being powered or provided by with dynamic content. So for example, this title is not hard coded or typed onto this page directly like this headline is. It's being pulled through from the post in our database. And the way we get that is we go into our text input here and you can see that we've got our DC post title, our dynamic content string that's pulling that information through. Again, we don't have to remember these tags at all. You can simply open up your dynamic content picker here. You can find the piece of information you're trying to work with. In this case, we want the post title that will populate the field and you're good to go. Right above it, we've got our image element which we are using to output the featured image of that post. So you can see we've got some alt text here that just describes that this is the featured image for that particular post. And then we can set that featured image by using our source control here. So if I close this out, and instead of adding an image manually here, we click this dynamic content icon, select featured image. And again, we can see that it is assigned. And now again, all these styles are something that I've created just for this starter template, but just get in there and play around and kind of see how it's working and uh, what you might want to tweak to get the layout that you're wanting to work with. Finally, you can see that if I hover over this post element, which is just our column in this main row, you can see that it is also yellow, indicating that it's dynamically being populated in some way, but it has this repeating square icon to the left of the label there, and that is our looper icon. So anytime you see that, that means that a looper consumer is turned on. And again, that was done under our customized tab here, right here. Finally, as a quick little aside, we've also got our column set up to use an anchor tag. This is a new feature in the latest release. And when you set a layout element to use an anchor as its tag, 
you will get a link control that opens up down here and we can populate that with dynamic content to link out to our post. So again, we're gonna go into dynamic content and loopers and all sorts of cool things you can do with those in another video, but that's just a very basic overview of how we're getting this output on this page. And remember that the data we're working with is provided because we selected that archive type when we created the layout at first. Now, the final thing to keep in mind on this page is that typically for a blog, you're probably gonna to wanna to have it broken up into multiple pages so that you're not seeing you know, hundreds of posts all at once if you've got a lot in your database. So we have a selection of pagination elements you can add. And in this case, I'm using the post pagination just so we can work through the blog. And this will allow us to get to you know, page two, three, four dynamically of whatever content we're working with. And the really cool thing about these starter templates is I really recommend you do play around with them, play around with the light and dark modes, see which things you like about them. Um, but just open them up, see how they're structured. Again, there's no right or wrong way how to do some of this stuff. These were really just ideas that I wanted to explore and show you all how to achieve certain results. So depending on a certain effect you're after or a layout, there's really no right or wrong way. If you can imagine it and create it in the uh, builder using our layout elements, then you can make it. So go through these and definitely just kind of get a sense of how things are being structured with those. But for now, I'm gonna run back to my minimal light template. And this is sort of the final piece of getting our archive layout working on the front end. We need to make sure that we have assigned it to a context. So for example, even though I've created this layout with my starter template and selected save, nothing is being output on the front end yet. And that's because I haven't told the layout builder where to use this yet. You can think of this kind of like when we create a header or a footer in those builders. You have to make sure that you assign that header or footer to a proper context to be output. It might be your entire site, or it might just be a selection of pages based on the design you're using. So to get our assignment working, all you have to do is go to the settings tab here and find the assignment control and set your assignment. However, you'll also notice that if you have not made an assignment yet, you'll see this tiny yellow bubble next to the preview manager. If you open up the preview manager, you'll be greeted by a big kind of warning message at the top, just alerting you saying, hey, you know, you haven't assigned this layout anywhere yet, so it's not live on your site. Click here to do so. So if I click on this message, you'll see that it takes me right to that settings pane and it will automatically open my assignment control. Now, all I have to do to get this working is click add control group and by default for the archive builder, the first selection that's added is blog is being viewed. So you can add this layout to all sorts of things. We could use this for all of our archives, for example, if we wanted to use it for tags and categories or a custom post type. Um, there's so many different ways you can break this down, but most simply and most likely you'll wanna start by designing your blog page. So, you know, the default selection when you add this first condition is your blog page. And all we have to do at this point is click save. And you'll see that also the yellow uh, bubble is gone. And one thing to keep in mind here is when I go to the front end, you'll notice that our old archive is still outputting. So why is that? Well, in the world of WordPress, we have to set a priority for a template or a certain function to take effect. Now, by default, we set every priority to zero. And for the most part, you're probably gonna have one blog layout. You're not gonna have multiple layouts that you're juggling. However, since our old layout was set with a priority of zero, and this new one is set with a priority of zero, since that one was first, it's gonna take precedence over this one. So really to get around that, all we have to do is make sure that we set a lower number. The lowest number will take precedence first. So since the old one was zero, and you can see those notes here in the help text, but since the old one was zero, if I set this one to negative one, and then save that, jump to the front end, you'll see that we've got our blog output here. And I can hover over my posts and see everything as it's supposed to be working.